challenging mechanics, magnificent environments, epic loot, and the unmistakably enjoyable absence of a garrison mission table. The following 10 dungeons demonstrate the very best of what cooperative content in World of Warcraft has to offer. These are the top 10 dungeons in World of Warcraft. From taking control of a clunky and cumbersome dragon in the Oculus to role-playing through an ogre stronghold in Dire Maul, while players are no strangers to gimmicky dungeons. But sometimes these deviations from the standard fare surprise and excite, just like Grimrail Depot. Set aboard a speeding train, Grimrail Depot exhibited perhaps the most unique set piece of any dungeon in Warcraft history. The cramped opening half and annoying trash keep it from placing higher on this list, but even the saltiest curmudgeon couldn't help but crack a smile the first time they saw the iron sides of the train fall off their hinges, revealing a stunning landscape rolling by. And bonus points for originality. Zul Farak is a long instance by today's standards, but compared to similar vanilla dungeons, its length was justified by the dungeon's smooth pacing, optional boss encounters, and the ability to ride a mount in the instance. It has received a few minor updates since launch, but unlike other dungeons of the era, Zul Farak has held up without any sweeping overhauls. And let's not forget about the awesome loot, like Big Bad Pauldrons, the Bad Mojo Mask, and an item that players went to entirely too much trouble to unlock called Carrot on a Stick, which increased your mounted movement speed by a mind-blowing 3%. Uh. The Wrath of the Lich King expansion delivered some of WoW's best raids and dungeons, along with excellent story beats to boot. The Caverns of Time, culling a strath home, let players relive the infamous Warcraft 3 mission in which a pre-Lich King Arthas Menethil demonstrated a questionable willingness to win the war against the Scourge at any cost, even if it involved massacring a town of innocent yet possibly infected civilians. Uh. But that sublime plot is then hijacked by the not-so-excellent invasion of time-traveling dragons who are attempting to stop the atrocity from taking place. Weird, right? Anyway, the Culling of Stratholme featured a pseudo-challenge mode in which an epic flying mount was guaranteed to drop if the dungeon was completed fast enough. As it turns out, dungeons are just better with Arthas in them. Wrath of the Lich King's final content patch added the excellent Ice Crown Citadel raid, along with three superb dungeons, which are noteworthy for two reasons, a weird James Brown Easter egg, wow. and being chased through a collapsing cavern by the Lich King himself. The Forge of Souls, Pit of Saren, and Halls of Reflection, when played sequentially, create the best dungeon experience in the entire expansion. But in spite of its narrative excellence, the final chapter's lengthy exposition and monotonous wave-based fights doomed its replayability. We get it, Arthas. You're evil and stuff. Change is good, right? The Cataclysm expansion brought much-needed updates to some classic zones and dungeons, and absolutely butchered others. Landing somewhere in between column A and B is the Deadmind. Unfortunately, I have no way to capture the old dungeon on some kind of theoretical legacy server running a vanilla version of the original game. Wait a minute, I think I have a great idea. You think you do but you don't. Well then, uh, the new version will just have to do. Discounting the dungeon in the literal middle of the Horde capital, the Deadmines was the first low-level dungeon Alliance players could enter. And what a dungeon it was. Getting to the entrance was half the battle, but once there, players were treated to a simplistic but satisfying onslaught of pirate-themed encounters, culminating in an epic duel with Captain Edwin Van Cleef. <clears throat> oh, I mean, uh, Captain Vanessa Van Cleef. <sighs> well, at least Cookie's still here. Usually forcing players to use anything other than their own skill bar ends in disaster, but Grim Batol's dragon riding intro is an example of an unconventional encounter done right. Teams with good communication could use the dragons to clear a significant amount of the dungeon's trash, paving the way for some of the best dungeon boss encounters the Cataclysm expansion had to offer. From the weapon-swapping pickup group killer Forge Master Throngus to the black hole summoning giant enemy crab thing, Grim Batol forced would-be raiders to mind their surroundings and keep their eyes on the action instead of the action bar. Everyone loves a coming-of-age story, and in the original release of World of Warcraft, coming-of-age, so to speak, meant hitting level 40. You got your license, could wear grown-up clothes, uh -huh. plus the once lofty goal of hitting level 60 seemed achievable for the very first time. Scarlet Monastery was the dungeon that ushered most players into this metaphorical adulthood. Consisting of four separate yet relatively short dungeons that would be later merged into just two, the Scarlet Monastery featured cohesive thematics, 
memorable, if a bit simple, boss encounters, Arise, my champion. and the first aesthetically interesting armor and weapons that vanilla players had come into contact with thus far. The dungeons were so attractive at the time that players from both the Horde and Alliance flocked to the monastery, creating a PvP hot zone in the lobby between dungeon entrances. Most players have fond memories of WoW's first expansion, The Burning Crusade, but the reality is that Warcraft was still finding its sweet spot dungeon-wise. The oppressive difficulty of dungeons like the Architraz was completely at odds with repetitive face rolls like the Black Morass, but one dungeon at the launch of Burning Crusade had, perhaps unknowingly, perfected the formula. Walking Dune Shadow Labyrinth went 4 for 4 with its near-perfect boss encounters. The final enemy, Murmur, boasted a retouch model lifted straight from the legendary Fire Lord Ragnaros. Abilities included knock-ups, silences, and a group-wiping explosion in which melee characters needed to run out of range of the initial blast, only to sprint back to stop the second larger detonation. Modern mechanical design with old-school difficulty meant Shadow Labs was a dungeon competitive players would eagerly return to for a chance at its epic loot. in what many consider to be the best content patch in the history of Warcraft. 2.4 Fury of the Sunwell gave players the Isle of Keldanas. Hardcore raiders faced off against the demon lord Kill Jaded in Sunwell Plateau. But those who couldn't muster 24 other geared, skilled, and attuned allies were treated to Magister's Terrace. The five-man instance was difficult in its own right, necessitating communication to bring down the final hurdle, a resurrected raid boss, Kaelthas Sunstrider. The dungeon was gorgeous, challenging, and absolutely packed with spoils. In a WoW dungeon first, each boss on heroic difficulty was guaranteed to drop an epic item. The instance also contained three pets, an epic mount, and a reusable toy that would turn your character into a blood elf for five <laughs> embarrassing minutes. The best dungeons in World of Warcraft are essentially five-man raids, so when two beloved raids were revamped and re-released as five-man instances, it's safe to assume that the end result was spectacular. The rise of the Zandalari brought Zul Garub and Zul Aman to the dungeon pool. Each retained their undiminished and sublime raid mechanics. Both sported a plethora of pet, mount, and distinct armored loot, and the two even shared a common narrative. But we have to give the edge, and by extension, the title of best dungeon in World of Warcraft to Zul Garou. Each revised boss was a mechanical masterpiece. The eye-popping jungle background was immediately immersive, and the dungeon was filled to the brim with mini-bosses, traps, gauntlets, and optional encounters. The collective experience of these loving touches epitomizes what every group encounter, Warcraft or otherwise, should strive for. For all things World of Warcraft, including Legion features and videos, keep it right here on IGN.